السلام على إمام المرسلين رسول الله سيدنا ونبينا محمد ابن عبد الله صلى الله تبارك وتعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن والاه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا وقرة أعيننا محمد عبد الله ورسوله اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما أغلق والخاتم لما سبق ناصر الحق بالحق والهادي إلى صراطك المستقيم وعلى آله حق قدره ومقداره العظيم وبعد يقول الحق تبارك وتعالى وقل رب زدني علما As we started the discussion of the importance and the necessity of knowledge in the life of the human being in general and the believer in particular because Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala opens his book with this very Word Iqra Ismi Rabbika Alladhi Khalaq Khalaq Ali Sana Min Alaq And he praises in the book in so many places the people of knowledge When he bore witness that there is none to be worshipped but him Subhana the second group to be a witness were the angels, those who are in 
the holy presence of Allah, and right after them come the people of knowledge. Shahid Allah, anna hu la ilaha illa huwa, wal malaikatu wa ulul ilm. <laughs> and Allah asked a question in the Quran: "Hal yastawi al-ladina yaglamuna, wal ladina la yaglamun?" Are those who have knowledge equal to those who do not? When Allah Tabaraka wa Taala brings a question and does not answer, that question can be called the question of Tawbih so Al-Tawbihi هَلْ يَسْتَوِ الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ but he indirectly answers that question by saying إِنَّمَا أَدَاتُ لِلْحَصْرِ إِنَّمَا يَتَذَكِّرُ أُولُوا لَلْبَابِ only those who know how to utilize their intellect by seeking the beneficial knowledge do have the can do the and the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbi wa sallam said that the difference between the person who do worship Allah without knowledge and the one who do have who does have knowledge is the difference of my own self, Rasulullah Sallallahu and the lowest person among the Ummah. Kafadli ala adnakum, says Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. So without any doubt, there is nothing like knowledge. Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib says that it is enough for knowledge to be something that is, I mean, it is enough for the importance and the virtue of the knowledge that even the jahil, if you give him the siva of ilm, is happy. Even the jahil. The jahil, you tell him, wow, mashallah, you did very good, your knowledge is this, and he knows he's not knowledgeable. He still feels, you know, some good in his heart, because he's, he's ignorant, and that is some is, is even more ignorance than ignorance itself. But when I, when I acquire knowledge, how and why? Mada akra? What do I read? Walimada akra? And why should I read? Because there are billions of books. In the Congress, you have over 20 million books in the library. And if you go, um, there is a, there is a um, uh, program that Union, Euro European Union has in, on the website, books that you can download and read, over billions of books that are downloadable, so that you can read them. And if you were to read a book a week, you only can read 52 books a year. So for 10 years, you only can read 500 something books. For 50 years, you can only read 5,000 something books. That means our life is very limited. If you were to read a book every single day, we still have so many books that are not to be read in our life. That means we need to know how to prioritize our reading, what to read, and why do we read. It is said that there are four types of readers. Four types of readers. Some people, they read to as we have 
the habit to say to kill the time. They need to do something, you know, to kill the time. In my country, in Senegal, there is something we call dahukor. When we fast, people they say they go to the sea so that they they kill the time to make themselves, you know, forget the pain of the hunger, which is one of the purposes of the fast. So this type of people are not really readers. Because these people, their life is so, I mean, has no value to them. To the, to the extent that they try to have something that will take this life away from them. Because of that, they grasp a book and read to kill the time. That's how useless to their eyes their life is. And many of us do read because of that. We just watch TV because we want to kill the time. We just go to Facebook because we want to kill the time. We just read because we don't want to you know, feel lonely. This type of people, to, to this type of people, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala address in the insan of the husk. In whom, illa kalan ami, bal hum abal. And unfortunately, this is the, I mean, if you were to do a percentage, 70 plus percent of us just read to past time. And the second group, man yakara'u biniyati li tila'i ala al-ma'lumati. Some people, they learn, they read, in order to acquire information, to know so-and-so did so-and-so. The place so-and-so is more beautiful or bigger than the place so-and-so. مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ حُمِلُوا التَّوْرَاتِ ذُمَّ لَمْ يَحْمِلُوهَا كَمَسَلِ الْحِمَارِ يَحْمِلُوا أَسْفَارَ Many, we just um, buy the newspaper or a book we do, just out of curiosity. But nothing comes from that knowledge. Nothing. We just want to know. So and so is bigger, so and so has, you know, who's the number one in the, in, in the world, who's the richest person in the world, who's this and this. That's it. We watch the game, you know, this guy, this, this, and this, this. This is the third um, thousand goal for so and so. And after that, that's halas. And over 20% of people reading, they just read to acquire knowledge. But there are <coughs> people who read li tahsin al wa ta'amiq al dhikri, wa tasheeh al tasawuri, wa tadwir al aql. People who read to correct their way of their, their way of seeing the things to have the necessary tools that enable one to make a correct judgment people who really to really um, understand to really know where to put what how to do the judgment al hukum al عن تصوره فألهمها فجورها وتقواها. This type of people are very few. Maybe less than three percent of people read in order to have a correct judgment to see things as they're supposed to be seen. And these people can go to the four category because if they stop there their reading again is, is useless. But the fourth category are really the people who, who do read. Those who read They do not only read to know, they do not only read to have correct judgment, they do not only read 
to better their understanding, but they do read to have their input, to add something to knowledge. That means their hearts are just like a garden where you put your butter, when you put your grain, in order for this grain to, to grow. For example, Imam Shafi learned from Imam Malik and from Laith, from the fiqh of Laith, from the fiqh of Abu Hanifa. He didn't just learn from them to learn. But the fruit of the knowledge he took from them was the very idafa that he brought to the world. Kitabul Um, how to make correct judgment, how to uh, bring about a hukum from the book of Allah and from the sayings of Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi wa wa Sahih wa Sallam. That's what you see when Imam Suyuti does his work in Nahu, in grammar. When Khalil ibn Ahmad brings something new, like Ilm al Arudi, when Abdul Qahir brings something new, when our scholars of the first and the last, you know, read and know and bring something that help us understanding understand the, the situation better, you know. From the from 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 um, the Muslim perspective, you can see someone like Muhammad al Isid, who's a who's who, who was born a Jewish and accepted Islam, and he has brought so many um, Islam. He became even a citizen in, in Pakistan, and he was even a a, um, a an ambassador here in the United Nations on behalf of Pakistan. And he was born in Europe from a Jewish family, an Orthodox, maybe Jewish family. But he left there, he went to Palestine, he left there, he went to Libya, and he met with Amr al-Muhtar, and he left there, he went, he didn't, his identity was not this and that, he was a Muslim. Someone like Malik ibn, Malik ibn Nabi, that Algerian hero, when he, um, uh, in, his, in his book, when he talks about Mushkilat al-Afkar fil alam al-Islami, when he, when he, when he, he, he talked about that, uh, the, the, our problem is not because we are colonized. That's not a problem. The colonizer is not a problem. And the dictator is not a problem. He said the problem is us, because we have what, we, what, is, what he called Qabiliyat al and then us until we solve that problem, he says, nothing is going to be, be happening. Meaning we learn from our history, but we just don't boast about our, our past. So like um, <coughs> Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Raz, those, those giant minds. Someone like Muhammad Iqbal, this they write in order to add something. So when we read, we need to read in, in, our, in order to to add something. So when I'm reading, I ask myself, from which category do I belong? Or to which category do I belong? I read, of course, because I want to take everything that will, will make me worried away from me. Because they say book, when, as long as you read a book, you're not worried. But if you know what the book is, in Fihumuman Nursi, يَا مَنْ عَانَا بِكُتُبِ الْعِلْمِ كَذَا الْأَحْزَانَ وَإِنَّمَا الطَّمَعُ أَصْلُ الْهَمِّ فَبِغِنَ النَّفْسِ أَزِلُ الْبَهْمِ They said that greed is what makes us worry. <laughs> and false hope makes us worry. But by acquiring correct knowledge, for a correct purpose, this worry will go. And when Muhammad Abdullah al uh, says that sometimes we think, as we think in the West, that um, the government is, to make, is here to make it easy for people to go, give us easy life, you know? And in some countries that you have dictatorship, when the government steal our money, and give some back to some of us, we praise them. 
And we talk about we have we need to obey the government whatever they do. We think we are here to do whatever the government wants. Not knowing that the government are representing us. And here in the West, we do not know that the government is not supposed to make it easy. It's not about Rafahiyya, he says. It's about Majd. Wal Majdu Afrul Min Al Hayati. Wal Mawt Ahwal Lilith Pabati. Wal Mawt Ahwal Lilith Pabati. That's why when Muhammad as a Proposed Amr al Muhtar to leave because he knew that the Italians would get him. He said, No. He's going to fight until the last breath of his, of his life. That's why, brothers and sisters, we need to prioritize. And we as Muslims, when we prioritize, when we read, there is no more important thing than, than the Quran. The Quran. But how? When we read the Quran, when we study the Quran, at the very same time, we need to study Rasulullah. That's what is called the fiqh of sirati. We need to study the life of the Prophet at the same time. Because no one can understand the Quran without understanding the life of Sayyidina Rasulullah. Sayyidina Aisha said, Kana khuluquhu Quran. The Prophet was the working Quran. You want to understand the Quran? You want to understand an nasikhu al munsuhu You want to understand some of Nuzul al ayati wa suri You want to understand the context of every single verse Whether this verse is applicable today or not This verse has to do with this or that You really need to know about the life of Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam So when we prioritize we read the Quran first. We know the Quran. And everything that comes will add up. And when we read, we don't want to um, go tomorrow here and today there and after tomorrow this. We want to know something from everything. But at the same time, we want to know something so much so that we recognize this or we are specialized in this in a way that we can bring our our participation to that very knowledge. When I read, do I just read to understand, to obey, to follow, or I want to add up something? And if I want to add something to knowledge, I need to spend my time on, on a specific knowledge more than anything else. For example, 60% of my time, I spend it maybe in ulum al-Quran, or maybe in ulum in tariq and maybe in ulum al or maybe in usul al or maybe in something else that I can have my participation. And when I read, I just don't want to read passively. Most of us read passively. We just read the book and we put it there. We want to take notes. We want to make a bath, you know, pages from the book that we, we learned. And we, these pages from the book can create a book. Many of us, when we talk about a book, they think, oh, you have to be this and that in order to, 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 to write a book. So that type of understanding is going to put us every time, you know, I mean, we're going to put us, put us back. It's something that I always remind myself and people that there is nothing that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala asked the Prophet Sallallahu to see in the Quran. But what? But knowledge. Wa qul rabbi zidni ilman. Wa qul rabbi zidni ilman. Because if you, the more you know Allah, the more you fear Him, the more you obey Him, the more you accept whatever that comes from Him. That's why the Prophet said, Amma ana, as for I, a'lamukum billahi. I know Allah more than anyone else. Most. I know Allah most. Wa akshakum lehu. You see, a'lamukum bihi wa akshakum lehu. Wa liya'lam al ladhina utu al ilma anna wa haqqu bin rabbika fayu minu bihi fatuh bita lehu kudu. So if I know him, then I will, I will do whatever that he wants. But the knowledge has to have this 
um, they have to have this near when I acquire knowledge. To remove the jahl, to do it for the sake of Allah. And it is because it is the command of Allah. And I want to add something to benefit the servants of Allah. Because we are here for only two purposes. Ibadatullahi wa naf'ul khalqi. Nothing else. Ibadatul khaliqi wa naf'ul khalqi. We are here to worship the Creator and to benefit the Creator. We worship the, the Creator, Allah, and we benefit the Creator. And if we really look um, closely to everything, everything that we're doing, we can see that. Even the very Salah we are about to do, how are we going to make Salah? The Salah starts with what? Allahu Akbar. That's glorifying, bearing witness, seeing and um, acknowledging the greatness of Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. But how we finish the Salah? We don't, do we finish the Salah with Allahu Akbar? No. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you. Who? The creature. Even in the Salah, we worship Allah and we benefit the Creator by making dua for them. But it doesn't only have to stop there. By saying assalamu alaikum means there's nothing in my heart against this brother or that brother. There is no hatred whatsoever against anyone from among the creators of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even the disbeliever, I cannot hate him. I only hate the state of the disbelief. I hate the kufr, not the kafir himself. I hate the actions he does, but not the person himself. Because if I develop hatred against a person, when this person becomes a Muslim, how, how much time do I need to develop love? That's why Prophet Wasallam said, none of you will be a believer until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. And even, even he, he, said, he said something prior to that. You will not enter paradise until you have Iman, until you believe. And you will never have Iman. You will never have Iman until you love one another. And he says, should I not tell you something that if you do, you will love one another? And then he said, Afshushala, Afshushala, spread, spread peace. Abdullah ibn Salam said, the first thing I heard the Prophet Sallallahu say when he arrived at Medina, that is called the khutbah to salam, the khutbah of peace. Ayyuhal nas, afshu salam, O people, spread peace. Wa at'imu ta'am, and feed, give food to people. Wa sallu bil-layli wa nasu niyam, and pray at night while people are sleeping. Tadkhulu al-jannata bi salam. Then you will enter Jannah in peace. Jannah itself is called Daru salam. So that's peace we need between us and Allah between us and ourselves, between us and our other brothers. And if we do not have that peace, nothing is gonna be happening. And there is something very, uh, that needs to, uh, that is worthy of, 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 of ta'amul in the Quran. That difference between the sin and the sin. The difference between dhunb and sayyat. The, evil, the sin and the sin. Or the sin and the evil to him. In the Quran, I never see that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala says that who will the young viru sayyat. He's the one who forgives the evil doing. The evil uh, doings. He never says that in the Quran. He never said, and when we Ask Allah to forgive us. We never say, Allahumma ghafir sayyatina. 
We don't say that. What do we say? Allahumma ghfir lana dhunubana wa kaffir kaffir anna sayyati. So when it comes to sayyat, he only uses the word kaffara, you kaffir, to expire. Because there is a difference between them and the sayyat. A huge difference actually. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala says, Inna al-hasanati yudhibna sayyat. He didn't say yudhibna dhunub. He says, Inna Allah yaghfiru dhunub jami'an. Inna huwa al-ghafur rahim. He didn't say, Inna Allah yaghfiru sayyat. Because dhunub is what we do that harm ourselves, which is the neglect of the right of the Allah or the violation of the rights of Allah that Allah has on us. When Allah wa ta'ala asks us to do something and we don't do, or He forbids us to do something and we do, that's a good. That is the When we neglect salat or zakah or hajj, that's the That's between us in Allah wa ta'ala. That's what Allah wa ta'ala says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَبُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ But sayyia is what we do which harms us between ourselves, amongst us. Sayyia is this, the, the evil do that I do to you or to him or to her. That's called the sayyia. And there is something very important again. I said that Allah does never ask the Prophet ﷺ to ask for anything in the Quran that Allah increase him in that thing except for, for knowledge. But Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, ma harram Allahu shi'an ala nafsihi illa bur. The only thing that Allah says, it is haram upon myself. Allah, who is the creator, the owner of every single one of us, He says He made it haram upon Himself to dhulm, to commit dhulm, to do any wrongdoing against anyone. وَمَا رَبُّكَ بِظَلَّامٍ لِلْعَبِدِ وَمَا ظَلَمَهُمُ اللَّهِ Allah never wrong anyone. Imagine something that Allah makes haram upon Himself. And He say, وَجَعَلْتُهُ إِنِّي حَرَّمْتُ ظُلْمَ عَلَى نُفْسِي وَجَعَلْتُهُ بَيْنَكُمْ مُحَرَّمًا فَلَا تَغَالَمُ So when I commit an evil action, that's why sayya is not a, 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 a mere sin. It is bigger than that. Sayyat. That's why the Prophet, as we say, when I would be dying, mean Sayyat. Me surely unfusina women say ye at our man. Sayyat. It's an evil. It's a bad action that you do to your brother. I mean, that you do to yourself. Because if you are supposed to love your brother the way you love yourself, whatever you do to your brother, you have done it to yourself. When I do something wrong to you, I am taking away my humanity from myself, my brotherhood from, from myself. Because you are me. That's what the Prophet said. But I backbite people. I slander. <coughs> it is very easy for me to say so and so if this and so and so if that. Without even thinking. Because I don't feel that sense of brotherhood. Because I'm empty. That's the sign of emptiness when we backbite people. And when we do that, Allah says, He expires. He expires uh, the sin, the, the, the sayyat. How? When we do go to shaheed or to the brother, whom I backbited, and I said, please forgive me. I did this in order to do that. When I go to you and give you your wealth that I took from you, 
and few, if, if there are any, will be those who will attack. So what can I do? Sometimes I can ask Allah to forgive you. I make salah and I ask Allah to forgive me and forgive everybody that I have done. And Allah says, In the hasanat, you the ibn al-sayyah. In tattakullah, I ja'allikum furqanam, wa yukafir ankum sayyatikum. So that is to be done by, by, by sincere tawbah, by asking Allah to God go to So we really uh, neglect that part of our life. But the Prophet Sallallahu says, this type of the people are those who are bankrupt on Yawm al -Qiyamah. We have come on Yawm al to Allah wa ta'ala with tons of salah, mountains of zakah and good deeds and hajj and fah. But because I have said something wrong, about so and so, Allah takes everything that I did and gives to that person. Hassan al Basri, when the person said to him, I heard that you were about biting me, he said, I, didn't, I don't love you that much. What do you mean? Because my good deeds, he says, is my rasuman, that's my capital. And if I backbite you, I, Allah takes all my capital to you. I can give you maybe some of my benefits, some of my rip, um, but my capital. So, brother and sister, we really want to think about that when we talk about people. What am I doing to myself? I'm robbing myself. I'm taking everything good that I do. To us, sometimes we make salah, which is good. That's the rest. We make hat, we make this, we make this. But when it comes to our tongue, Satan Abu Bakr used to take his tongue and to pull it out of his mouth. And Umar asked him, he said, because of this, I may be destroyed, the tongue. And this is only one, 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 one. But with knowledge, this can be taken away. Ask Allah wa ta'ala to make us among those who acquire knowledge for the sake of Allah and to add to that knowledge, mm. and we ask him to to make us among those who acquire the knowledge and act upon the knowledge and do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask him to wa ta'ala to know him and to know his Prophet <coughs> and to act as he wants us to act mm. and according to the teachings of his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We ask him to wa ta'ala to remove the hatred and every single sickness from our heart and from our bodies. Mm -hmm. It put and fills our heart with the love of Allah mm -hmm. and with the love of one another. Wa and alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, salatu wa salam ala imam al mursadina rasulillah. Sayyidina wa habibina Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa nuala. Very shortly, inshallah, as I said it last um, month, we had a fundraising dinner. And we have um, collected um, over $10,000. And what we decided was, inshallah ta'ala, in April, we're going to have a program, April 21st. And after that program, we want to acquire the building for for, for, for the masjid. We want to buy a building for the masjid. And whatever we have by then, we're going to put it, inshallah, to baraka wa ta'ala, in order to, um, we're going to bring it to, um, as, as a down payment, inshallah, we have some Islamic institutions that we're talking with, uh, in order to use that money for down payment and acquire the building. Because every single year, even this year, like I have the letter, we haven't, haven't signed it yet. There is an increase for the rent again. You know, we cannot keep paying rent. But if for us to do that, this money that we have, we have put it in our account in Bank of America. We don't want to touch it. I said that every single time we make a fundraising, we pay bills with it, and this and this until it's done. What we decided, inshallah, may inshallah, is to not touch a single dollar from that. But for that to happen, inshallah, we are invite every single one of us to please help with the rent, to please help with the bills, 
to please help with the charges of the masjid. So that that money is going to be there. And on April, we're going to have a, a program. And whatever we collect from now to April is going to add. And inshallah, Allah ta'ala, we can get something for ourselves. We can get something for, for Allah. إنما يعمر مساجد الله ومن أظلم من عم مساجد الله وأن المساجد لله it's for it's going for Allah and being for Allah means it's for servants of Allah سبحانه وتعالى so we are inviting all of us to try our best إن شاء الله تبارك وتعالى to help pay the bills the end of the month and for us to not take part of that money we need to I'm collecting enough so thank you everyone that have been supportive. Um, since the beginning, but nobody is doing anything for anyone here. We are doing it for ourselves. Allah <laughs> So, inshallah, we, we're inviting everyone to please help us with that. ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة إلا قضيتها ويسرتها لنا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين وأعلم كلمتك كلمة الحق والدين اللهم من كاننا فكيده ومن بغى علينا فاغذله وصل الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد الفاتح الخاتم الناصر الهادي وآخر دعوانا لحمد الله